Well, hello and welcome YouTube, Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video on MathBase, of course, and as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Step on inside as we go into section 9.3 in the Big Ideas Math Integrated Math 2 textbook on its similar right triangles, brought to you by KitKat. Um, section 9.1, excuse me, this chapter is on right triangles and trigonometry. We haven't yet hit the trig, that starts in, I believe, 9.4. In 9.1, we hit Pythagorean Theorem. In 9.2, special right triangles, nine, three, similar right triangles. So a lot of things to be learned before trig, we can maybe apply it with trig or have it for some certain kind of concepts. And um, yeah, here we're gonna be, let's let's look into some of the stuff that you can download on the PDF in the description section down below. Now we are going to be looking at a right triangle where there's an altitude drawn into here. Find three triangles that are similar to each other in this one and set up proportions. We're also going to use something called geometric means. Now that's something that is natural in the section. I haven't yet gone through the section, but I imagine they're going to be hitting some theorems that I don't always use. I'm big on the proportions basis of this, and as I'm the teacher of record in my own videos, I'm going to use my prerogative to determine when I want to use a formula that they're kind of forcing on us versus something that I feel is going to naturally make more sense to me and hopefully to my viewing audience. So it's, it's up to whomever that is. The way that I teach it to my own students is probably the way they're going to follow. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this stuff and let's jump into it. After this portion, again, check the timestamps down below if you want to find the actual problem set that goes up to like problem 45 or something like that. We'll be ready to go. Oh, I let me pop that thing up. Give me one moment. Okay, it pops that thing up and it goes to number 45. All right. All right, guys, we are going to identify similar tri triangles, solve real life problems involving similar triangles and use geometric means. What's a geometric mean? It's a new term. We're going to learn it pretty soon here. Let's start by identifying similar triangles. When the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, the two smaller triangles are similar to the original triangle and to each other. What did they just say? There's a big right triangle here, ABC. You can tell by the right angle here. It's maybe not drawn in the way that you're used to, but if I turn it over like this, you go, oh, yeah, ABC, right? Right triangle. Uh, if I turn it over this way, though, you can probably see the altitude drawn in a better way, this CD like that. Well, this triangle ABC is similar to these other two triangles that you have here, ADC and BDC. I'm probably not saying them the right way. There's an orientation for which they all need to be drawn a certain way. If they don't prove it, we're going to talk about it. There's an angle-angle proof that we can use uh, here that's pretty straightforward. So, oh, here they have the statements. Triangle CBD, CBD is this guy. CBD is similar to triangle ABC, which is similar to triangle uh, ACD, ACD. So they're all oriented in different ways, and I think that's important to note. They're not all faced the same way there. But this, the, this triangle split up here and triangle split up here. You can call it the small triangle, the medium triangle, and the big triangle or large triangle. That's something I'm probably going to say quite often. But they're similar. They're similar to each other, and this is true in right triangles when an altitude is drawn. So let's identify the similar triangles here. Looking at this diagram, what are the three that are there? Um, they are, they, they ask and offer you, and it's probably best to go based on the obviousness of the drawing. They draw things to scale, whether or not we care about that. But there's this big right triangle here, STR. You can see that ST is clearly the short leg, TR is the long leg, and SR is the hypotenuse. Well, let's redraw this triangle here with U, T, and R in such a way that it, it's drawn the same way as S, T, and R. U is the right angle. It's going to align with T. Now, U, T is the short leg. So U, T is in correspondence with T, S right here, the T, S that we have there. It's smaller. It's not congruent, but it's in correspondence. It's the short leg. And the long leg, U, R, corresponds with the long leg here, T, R. So you can see that those are corresponding. And then in the small triangle, we have short leg, SU, long leg, UT, hypotenuse, ST. And we can draw it that same way as well. And in correspondence, if we draw them the same way, we can see that triangle TSU is similar to triangle RTU and similar to triangle RST. And I wholly recommend that you do those. It sounds like these are going to be problems we're going to be asked to do. But I wholly recommend that you do a redrawing of these to get used to this concept. If you're not good at saying out loud things like short leg, long leg, hypotenuse, for the small triangle, medium triangle, and big triangle. I'll probably call this the mid triangle or something like that. I don't know. I'll think about it. All right, there are some examples I'm going to go ahead and skip. Let's keep moving forward. Um, modeling with mathematics. So word problems with these. A roof has a cross section that is a right triangle. 
The diagram shows the approximate dimensions of the cross section. Find the height h of the roof. So, I mean, there are probably other problems that they would have before a word problem with this. I don't know for sure. But the idea of having similar triangles means that we can find lengths by setting up proportions. And that's the big thing. H, this height of this thing, it's not necessarily a Pythagorean theorem bit that we're going to use. Instead, we're going to find it through proportions of triangle similarity. H represents not just the altitude that's drawn in this big triangle here, but it's also the short leg of this medium-sized triangle, and it's the long leg of this big, uh, of the small triangle, I should say. And when you redraw all three triangles the same way so that they're similar, and this is important to note that these angles here that correspond are congruent, you can see H exists in this part of this triangle and in this part of this triangle. So much so that you can set up a proportion of it to solve. You don't have to use both H's, you'll just use one. In fact, you can't really use both here because you're going to have to make sure that you can apply H in such a way that when you set up a proportion, it, ha it hits other parts that correspond. This H is the part of the short leg, but I can't use this short leg right here because I don't know its value. But I do know this guy's short leg of 3.1. I can say H is to 3.1 or something. They say H is to 5.5. They go for these two parts here that correspond or... Actually, 5.5 exists in multiple parts. Let me start drawing. I believe they're saying H here is to this 5.5 there. So the long leg of the small triangle, you're going to hear me say this a lot, okay? Hear, hear what I'm saying. The long leg of the small triangle is to the long leg of the big triangle. As, now find two of the parts that correspond that are the same in both triangles. The hypotenuse of the small triangle is to the hypotenuse of the big triangle. So what's their setup? H over 5.5 is 3.1 over 6.3. Corresponding side lengths of similar triangles are proportional, and we find those. Short leg of the small, excuse me, long leg of the small, long leg of the big, hypotenuse of the small, hypotenuse of the big. Now, they could have also done it this way, and I'd be none the wiser. Short leg of the medium triangle, short leg of the big triangle, hypotenuse of the medium triangle, hypotenuse of the big triangle. Oh, hold on. They didn't write it that way, though. They could have done it this way. Short leg of the medium, hypotenuse of the medium. Short leg of the big, hypotenuse of the big, and it still divides. Anyway, no matter how you set it up, this isn't new information for us to say it, but the point is I'm not always going to redraw the triangles. I'm not always going to redraw the triangles, and I might set up proportions in that way where I say short leg, long leg, hypotenuse of the small, medium, and big triangles. Cross, multiply, and solve, and you're going to get H's, uh, or whatever they do, 2.7, around 2.7 meters. Okay, um, look back. Because the height of the roof is the uh, is a leg of right triangle this, right triangle that should be shorter than the hypotenuse. Yeah, so just taking a look back, 2.7 should be somewhere between, you know, I don't know what they were going to say. Uh, 2.7 is less than 3.1, and that seems reasonable. Oh, because it should be less than the hypotenuse, this is what they're saying. It absolutely should. It can't be more than 3.1 or 5.5. Okay, let's keep moving forward. All right, let's look at geometric means. Now, a geometric mean, uh, they don't say this, uh, so I'm going to bring it up. The geometric mean is the value between any two numbers in a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence can be something like 2, 6, 18, 54. I'll put a blank here as an example of this. Uh, what would be the number? 486. Uh, I don't know what the next number would be. But a geometric mean is, uh, excuse me, a geometric sequence is a sequence of values that are separated by a common ratio, something you're multiplying by over and over that's uh, constant, consistent. This is times three, right? We're multiplying by three each time there. So this number, this unknown, for example, could represent the geometric mean of the numbers 54 and 486. Now, you know that the common ratio is times three, but the idea of these problems is you generally wouldn't know what it was. Let's say it was some sort of times r. That would mean 54 times r squared is 486, and um, 486, uh, you know, so basically there's a way you can solve it. And here you'd get 162. But my point is where you see this x squared, it can be a result of two things that are multiplying on some side, just like this r squared is on this side. But the 162 is the geometric mean of 54 and 486. Uh, in such a way that if I did 486 divided by 162, I would get 3. And if I did 162 divided by 54, I would also get 3. Once again, you can see that thing exists right here. A over X is X over B. You can see how 162 is the geometric mean if X is the geometric mean of numbers A and B. So 
The geometric mean of two positive numbers a and b is the positive number x that satisfies this setup here. Once again, the number between two values in a geometric sequence, a over x is x over b, so x squared is a times b, and yada yada. Okay, finding a geometric mean. Let's find the geometric mean of 24 and 48. And once again, if you didn't know how to set this thing up in a way to remember it, just keep in mind, in a geometric sequence, it would be the number in between these two in the geometric sequence. 24 times some number is x, x times that same number is 48 is something you could say. You could also say 24 divided by x is the same thing as x divided by 48 with that in mind, or the other way around, and you would cross multiply and solve. Now they went straight into the setup here. See, I'm no good at talking about this because I, I wouldn't have written it this way, but um, I would have set it up as a proportion to begin with, then cross multiply, just to remind ourselves that we know what we're doing. This is where you can cross multiply, get x squared is 24 times 48. I'll let them do the rest of the work. You get 24 root 2. That's the geometric mean between these two. Now, why do they bring up geometric means in a section called similar right triangles? There were no right triangles in that setup. Because right triangles do have some setups with the three similar right triangle things where there are geometric means. There are three specific circumstances where they occur. Now, there's only one that I personally ever remember enough to talk about, and it's probably the first one they're going to bring up. Um, it's where this thing is the geometric mean of this length and this length. That's the only one that I ever even remember to know personally. Um, even then, I can still talk about this in other ways, but it's what they bring up as well. <laughs> Let's read this. In right triangle ABC, altitude CD is drawn to the hypotenuse, forming two smaller right triangles and are similar to triangle ABC. We learned that. From the right triangle similarity theorem, you know that these three triangles are similar because triangles are similar as you can write in simplified proportions. Okay, so these proportions right here, you can see there are certain setups, and I'm going to announce out loud what they are. When I say CD over AD, when I see CD and AD here, I to me, I'm looking at the long leg, the long leg of the small triangle, and here, AD, I'm looking at the long leg of the, say, medium triangle. CD over AD equals. Now, how can I use CD again in another format? Go to the small triangle, go to the medium triangle. We can talk about the short leg because CD is the short leg in the medium triangle. So we can say DB, the short leg in the small triangle over CD, the short leg in the medium triangle. So the long leg in the small over the long leg in the medium equals the short leg in the small over the short leg in the medium. A way to show that CD is represented twice in here the altitude. Cross multiply, you get CD squared equals AD times BD. Uh, this guy squared equals this times that. Anyway, probably not something that I'm really privy to remember as well. CB. CB is not only, CB represents two different things basically, right? It represents the hypotenuse of the small triangle and it represents the short leg of the big triangle. So how could I mention the hypotenuse in the big triangle and the short leg in the small triangle now? The short leg excuse me, the hypotenuse in the small is to the hypotenuse in the big, AB. Oh, sorry, they, excuse me, they talk about the big triangle first. The hypotenuse, uh, the um, short leg in the big triangle is to the short leg in the small triangle, CB over DB, as the hypotenuse in the big triangle, AB, is to the hypotenuse in the small triangle, CB. Cross multiply and you get this setup. Lastly, AC. AC represents something in two different sets of triangles. AC is both the long leg in the big triangle and the hypotenuse of the medium triangle. So what do they talk about, AC and AD? Well, AD is the um, long leg in the medium triangle. So the long leg in the big is to the long leg in the medium, as now AC is the uh, hypotenuse, right? As the hypotenuse of the big, AB, is to the hypotenuse of the medium, AC. And I know my drawings aren't probably helping you out with that, but what I'm saying out loud is what we would have seen if we redrew these triangles. I didn't even see these triangles here. <laughs> I was going to say if we redrew these triangles in a way. So, okay, well, this triangle isn't redrawn in some sort of way that helps us. But yes, that's how that thing works. So there are three parts, this, this, and this, that represents two different things potentially in these two triangles. Now, the way I said it out loud is the way that I know it best, and that's how I'm going to go about it for the most part. But these are all ge geometric means because of its format. Its appearance shares this appearance right here. They are geometric means. 
So the geometric mean altitude theorem and the geometric mean leg theorem, and there might be a third, uh, no, that's it. Geometric mean altitude theorem says in a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse divides the hypotenuse into two segments here and here. The length of the altitude is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments of the hypotenuse. This is the geometric mean of this length and this length, as to say this over this equals this over that. DB over CD is CD over AD, things like that. That's the only one that I ever remember, care to remember. The other two have to do with these legs here. Um, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse. Divide, uh, hold on. Right angle to the hypotenuse. This one divides the hypotenuse into two segments right here. The length of each leg, like this one here, CB, of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to the leg. So that's too much for me to remember. So they're saying that this over this equals this over the, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really good at this, but CB squared is DB times AB. And AC squared is AD times AB. Yes, there are proofs to these kinds of things that we use from setups of similar right triangles, but that's what I go about. Uh, I go off proportionality. It's something I'm going to remember in the vacuum of us doing these problems, probably. It's not something I'm going to remember outside of it or that I care to remember when I have another process that I can do just as fast. But let's look at the examples that they do have. Let's find the value. This is the only one, again, that I do remember. It's just the way that it just connects and it works out. Again, I tend to set up a proportion before it. Find the value of each variable. X is the geometric mean of 6 and 3, as if to say 6 over X equals X over 3. 6 over X equals X over 3. When you cross multiply, you can see X times X is X squared, and 6 times 3 happens there. So that's kind of what I would start with. This is what I would start with, me. Um, X squared is 18, and square root of 18 is 3 root 2, so that's the value of X. X is the geometric mean of 6 and 3. 3 root 2 is that value. Now with this one here, it's the same kind of thing where, again, if I set this thing up, I guess it would be, uh, see, I can't remember a proportion I'd use to set it up unless I did it on my own. My way I'd do this proportion is this. This is what I would do. Y is the hypotenuse of the small triangle and seven is the hypotenuse of the big triangle. So I could say Y is to seven, hypotenuse of small, hypotenuse of big. And notice that we have the short leg of the small two and the short leg of the big Y short leg of the big triangle here, y, and that's my setup. When I cross multiply, I get y squared equals two times seven. Notice that they have that down right here as well. So there's a way I can set it up with that same kind of idea because I know which parts would correspond without needing to redraw and mention that. But they have that same thing going. So if you remember it from their thing, great. I'm here with my video and you know, you're here for a reason, so hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see this example using indirect measurement. To find the cost of installing a rock wall in your school gymnasium, you need to find the height of the gym wall. Use a cardboard square to line up the top. How long has this been? 18 minutes. The top and bottom of the gym wall. Oh, it's over here. Uh, your friend measures the vertical distance from the ground to your eye and the horizontal distance from you to the gym wall. So five feet and eight and a half feet. Approximate the height of the gym wall. So we need to find this W. Hopefully you can see this enough on this video. It's kind of, low. oh, that, that should be good enough. So we're trying to find this W here. And 8.5 is the geometric mean of 5 and W. And I think that's what we're building off of doing those. So again, a setup I could do here is like 5 over 8.5 equals 8.5 over W. And when you cross multiply, notice the 8.5s get squared. And W times 5 happens on the other side. So uh, apparently... When you square that, you get this value, and divide by 5, you get 14.45, which is W there. So anytime I see this setup, I'm going to be privy to use the geometric mean and probably say it out loud. That'll be fine. Uh, the other two, I'll try, but that's not my purpose for these, really. The height of the wall is 5 plus W, which is 5 plus 14.5, which is 19.45 feet. Okay, are we done? Yes, we are. So uh, let's go ahead and do the vocabulary and core concept check. And I'll, I'll see how I do on the geometric mean questions with you because I'm stuck in my own ways. I'm doing something else. And I'm sorry about that. If the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed are similar to the original. And I don't know what to answer. If the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed to the 
are similar to the original triangle and chorus and have corresponding side lengths i don't actually know what they want me to say in that situation um and oh then the two triangles form they're not just similar to the original triangle they're also similar to each other they're just saying and those to each other i thought they wanted me to say a whole nother portion of this thing got it got it got it that totally makes sense the two triangles formed are similar to the original triangle and they're similar to each other great all right in your own words explain geometric mean the best way i say it i already said it a couple times the value between two to any two terms in a geometric sequence now if you know what a geometric sequence is i this is not what they're going to say here but they said my own words it's the value that you find from having multiplied the same thing twice to go from one value to the next. So multiply by it once, it's the value that's in between. There's also something called an arithmetic mean. It's the value between two values in an arithmetic sequence. It's also known as the average between two values, the midpoint between two values. Geometric's a little bit different, different though. Probably not the best answer. I'm sure you could get some other ones, but that's the one that I'm going to say there. Um, anyway. Uh, I like to set it up with a ratio with that in mind, basically. All right, guys. Um, I don't know how well this video is going to go, and it can probably go pretty long going to 45 questions. I feel I've been lucky in 9.1 and 9.2 not having very long videos. This should easily go over the two-hour mark. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get started. Let's start with numbers three and four where we identify the similar triangles. Now, I think this is supposed to be akin to the first problems that we saw in the example sets where we kind of redraw the triangles themselves so i'll let those triangles be as they appear for now and i want to redraw them in such a way that we make things look similar-esque so sorry it's gonna be rough drawing things but let's get the big triangle out of the way because the way that it appears now is the way i want the other ones to look f h g is here now there's a medium triangle, it's not much smaller than it, but I'm going to just make it look like that, where we have the right angle, and the right angle here, the right angle here is, uh, so this is in this medium triangle right there, the right triangle is E, okay, the right triangle is E. Now there's a long leg and there's a short leg here as well, E, the long leg goes from E to G, and the short leg goes from E to H, it's great to identify these, and then the small triangle we have a right angle, although they don't draw the right angle symbol. It's also E right there. And the long leg of the small triangle is from E to H, and the large, uh, the short leg is from E to F. So those are the redraw of those three things, and they say identify the similar triangles. I want to say them all in the same you know, way. Let's do it alphabetically. Triangle F, G, H for the first one is similar to what? This next one, F, G, H, let's go here, H, G, E and F H E H G E and F H E this part is so important for you to be able to do whether or not you redraw them each time that's not my plan but you start talking about small triangle uh, big triangle medium tri triangle small triangle long leg short leg hypotenuse and once you start bringing those up you really start to connect what goes to what when you set up a proportion all right number four is the same kind of idea it's literally uh, it's already drawn theirs, and I'll let it be, but let's redraw them all, I guess, in that fashion. Why not? It's kind of a weird way to do it, but hey. So the big triangle, we have M, K, L. Now, I'll just make them smaller, whatever. Okay, so the right angle in the medium triangle is N. The short leg goes from N to M, and the long leg goes from n to l like that and in the small 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 triangle here the right angle is n once again the short leg goes from n to k and the long leg goes from n to m and the hypotenuse is from m to k by the way so this triangle statement similarity statement could be um l m k no k k l m triangle k l m K L M. Here we'll find M L N. M L N. And here we'll have triangle K M N. 
So look out which order I did that. I just chose alphabetically, but then everything corresponded. Once they're drawn the same way, you correspond things just based on order like that. And that's numbers three and four. Okay, in exercises five through 10, find the value of X. This is where I'm going to get a lot in my proportion talk here. And I just wanna find things that can be identified the same way. Basic goal for me right here is, I wanna look at X and ask myself, what can X represent in a triangle? And to me, it's this. X can either to me represent the short leg in the medium triangle, or it can represent the long leg in the small triangle. Now, as I look at both of those, let's go back to the short leg and the medium triangle. I have to ask, does a short leg exist in any other triangle that we see? Yes, we also have the short leg in the big triangle. Now, is that something I can set up a proportion with? Could I do some form of x over seven? Short leg, actually, let me write this first. Short leg, I'm not gonna do this all the time, in the medium triangle over the short leg in the big triangle. We know those values. We don't know the value, by the way, of the short leg in the small triangle, so I'm not gonna do that. So notice how it is short, medium, and short, big. Now, do I have something in the medium and big again that I can do a proportion with? Short, short, big, short, big. What else do I have in the medium triangle? I have its hypotenuse. Remember, the medium triangle has a right angle right here. The hypotenuse is 24. Do I have the hypotenuse of the big? Yes, 25. So we can do hypotenuse of medium and hypotenuse of big. So in this setup here, I can do short leg of medium, x, over short leg of big, seven, sorry, I didn't know what I was looking for for a second, equals hypotenuse of the medium, 24, over the hypotenuse of the big, 25. That's gonna be my personal setup there. Could have we redrawn these triangles? Absolutely. You could have redrawn them. I probably should have redrawn these things. Actually, for the sake of this problem, I will. One more time, you can see where this will show up. We can see if there was another proportion we could have done, or another way we could have seen this exact same proportion here. So I won't do redraws for probably any of the other ones here. Uh, but in this one, let's just redraw them all facing this direction. Here's the big, medium, small triangles. Um, in the big triangle, let's uh, the right angle is Z. The short leg goes from Z to Y. The long leg goes from Z to X. In the medium triangle, the right angle is W. The short leg goes from W to Z. The long leg goes from W to X. In the small triangle, the right angle is W. The short leg goes from W, Y. The long leg goes from W to Z. So let's align those things up. Z, Y is 7. <clears throat> y, X is 25. And this guy's 24. By the way, this is a Pythagorean triple. It's a 7, 24, 25 special right triangle. Um, w to X, unknown. W to Z, that's X. That's what we're putting. It's a different X from that X. And Z to X is 24. And then in the small triangle, Y to Z is 7. W to Z is X. And Y to W is unknown. So you can... We can look at these and ask ourselves which ones we can set up proportions with. I know the long leg in both of these, the small and the big triangle. I know the hypotenuses in both of these, the small and the big triangle. I could have said X over 24 equals seven over 25. Well, guess what? All those numbers are used just in a different portion, but 25 will still multiply with X and seven will still multiply with 24. I could have done that. The one that I did was the short leg of the medium over short leg of the big, hypotenuse of the medium over hypotenuse of the big. As long as they correspond, you can work it out, and as long as it has our variable. So that's my setup. I've spent way too long on the problem. Let's go and keep, let's keep going. Cross multiply here, and I get 25x equals, now seven times 24 is 168. I need a calculator. I'm gonna divide both sides by um, 25. I get X is 6.72. X is 6.72. Okay, that's number five. All right, I'm not intending on doing redraws in the future here. I might not even do writing in this variety, but I will say those things out loud always, especially if I'm not actually doing geometric means. On number six, with the drawing in mind, once again, X is in the middle here. X can represent either the long leg of the small triangle or the short leg of the medium triangle. Now you have to ask yourself, as far as long leg goes of the small, do I have a long leg elsewhere? Yes, I have long leg of the medium. 
So let's see if we can work something out in proportion here. X over 16 equals long leg of the small, long leg of the medium. No, excuse me, long leg of the big, long leg of the big triangle, big triangle. Oh, I have the long leg of the medium as well. But I just said the big, because you know what else I have the big? The hypotenuse, and I have the hypotenuse of the small triangle, 12. So I have the long leg of the small, the long leg of the big. I have the hypotenuse of the small in 12. I have the hypotenuse of the big in 20. There's a setup. We can use that. There's more than one I could have used. I'm sure. I'm not positive, but there's probably more than one I could have used there. And there's my setup. You know, 12 over 20 can reduce. Why not? I don't want bigger numbers if I can avoid it. Let's cross multiply and we get 5x equals 48. Divide both sides by 5. We get x is, I can do that in my head, 9.6, uh, I believe. Okay. Um, number seven. Number seven. And again, redraw the triangles, please. By, by all means, redraw the triangles. But the end goal is you're still going to do a setup here. X is once again, these, I, I mean, all these problems really have this, they have the same information. These aren't changing. So what I did on the last problem, I think was different from what I did on the problem before. But Let's call X this time the short leg of the big triangle. Short leg of the big triangle and the, let's find a short leg elsewhere. Excuse me, short leg of the medium triangle. Short leg of the medium triangle and short leg of the big. We got X over 15. I think I did this the first time. Equals, let's find something else in the medium and the big triangles. We have, we don't have the long leg. We have the hypotenuse in the medium and the hypotenuse in the big. 36 over 39. I think, yeah, I think I did this the first time but there's only so many ways I can do it. So X over 15 equals, reduce that and we get 12 over 13. Cross multiply, we get 13 X equals 180. Divide by 13, I'm just gonna write 180 over 13. It's, um, it's, not, a, it's not a pretty number, I'm certain. Uh, number eight, let's go back to talk about short, uh, the long leg of the short so check this out. Let's let's try this. Let's do the long leg of the short triangle, of the small triangle. Long leg of the small triangle. And did I do the medium last time? Let's do the big. Let's do the long leg of the big. I don't know if I did, but the long leg of the big is 30. And the hypot... Oh, no, I don't have the long leg of the medium. The hypotenuse of the small is 16. The hypotenuse of the big is 34. I think I did that last time on number six. So let's reduce that one. X over 30 is 16 over 34 divided by 2. 8 over 17. Cross multiply and divide both sides by 17. You get 240 over 17. Something that also can't reduce. They don't ask you to round to a nearest anything. So I wrote the other ones exact because I could. Uh, these last two are kind of weird, weirdly fractions. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving forward to numbers 9 and 10. Still part of the same sets, but with diagrams. They're kind of hard to see, but they do show, let's kind of redraw it. They do show a right triangle with an altitude, X, and this length is 23 feet and 12.8 feet. Wish I drew this better. And the whole thing, is the whole thing 26.3 feet? I don't think so. I think it's just this part, 26.3 feet. So this is a different problem because we don't have the hypotenuse of the big triangle anymore. Um, so X still represents that altitude portion though, right? So X can either represent the long, it's the long leg of the small triangle because that would be the short leg. So I could say the long leg of the small. I could do the long leg of the big but I don't have the hypotenuse of the small. Excuse me, I don't have the hypotenuse of the big to do with the hypotenuse of the small. I could find it through Pythagorean theorem, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go elsewhere with this. Let's do the long leg of the small and the long leg of the medium. The long leg of the medium triangle is 26.3 feet. Because now I can do the hypotenuse of the small in 12.8 and the hypotenuse of the medium as 23. Suddenly that doesn't sound like a hypo um that can't be possible. 26.3 must be the whole thing then, because you can't have the medium. Okay, 
this this must be the whole side it's very hard to see on this diagram the whole thing must be 26.3 because you can't have a long leg of a medium be longer than its hypotenuse so let's let's do that again x is the long leg of the small and 23 is the long leg of the big triangle the hypotenuse of the small is 12.8 feet and the hypotenuse of the big triangle is 26.3 so i can do it that way if i cross multiply i'm going to get 26.3 x equals where do they come up with these numbers 23 times 12.8 i guess they uh measured a, a lifeguard house thing stand 294.4 divided by 26.3 tell me it's clean nope um i'm just gonna write an approximation for this one it's a word problem right so it's around 11.2 feet it's 11.19 something so that's gonna be my x value there and that makes sense you know as far as i didn't check other problems but at least it's less than both of these values, both the hypotenuses that would be represented in these different uh, triangles we have here. And I just thought of another way I could have done the problem if I wanted to do uh, the medium triangle stuff. Maybe I'll try it in this next problem if it's set up the same way, which I think I did in the previous problems. Number 10. Uh, I think you see that one probably just fine, I'd hope. 5.8, again, I'm going to assume is the whole thing. It can't just be this part because 4.6 would need to be larger, and it's not. So x this time I'll represent, again, I think I did this before, x I'm going to represent as the medium leg, the medium leg in the, excuse me, the short leg in the medium triangle. So x is the short leg in this triangle here. Okay. And do we have, have a short leg elsewhere? Yes, in the big triangle, 3.5. So short of medium over short of big equals something else in the medium over something else in the big. We have the hypotenuse of the medium is 4.6, and the hypotenuse of the big is 5.8. This is also in feet. Cross multiply, 5.8x equals... sixteen point one. And divide both sides by 5.8. It's not going to be pretty, but in a word problem sense, x is around approximately equal to 2.8 feet. It's around 2.77, 5, 8, 6, something, something. Okay, that's 5 through 10. Let's keep moving forward. And these are like the easier problems, right? Well, now we're going to seek some geometric means. Find the geometric mean of the two numbers now the way that i spoke about these previously was and this isn't the way that we got to set it up i'm just giving you the idea of why i'd set it up this way i'm going to find some unknown value in a geometric sequence you know right here that i have to multiply by something here to get to x and something here to get to 32. that's something i need to multiply by it can be set up if i divided 32 by x i get what i multiply by if i divide x by 8 i get what i multiply by and that number needs to be the same it needs to be a common ratio so here's the way we could set it up. 32 over x is x over 8. We also could have done 8 over x is x over 32. It's the more common way that I write it. Even though it's not exactly the common ratio, they would still, when you cross multiply, have the x's multiply and 32 multiply with 8. x's multiply, 32 multiply with 8. Either way, you're going to end up with x squared equals 32 times 8, the way that the book is telling you to get it done. But it comes from that proportion. So if I'm going to be doing this the rest of the way, I'll set up one more proportion on number 12. But if I'm going to be doing this the rest of the way, I want you to know where it came from. Now, 32 times 8, I don't know. It's actually better if I leave them separate. So x squared, excuse me, x is the square root of 32 times 8. The reason why it's better that I leave them separate here is because I think I can better break this thing up in a way that'll help me. Uh, like 32 can be broken up into uh, 16 times 2, so it can be 4 root 2. And 8 can be broken up into 4 times 2, so that's 2 root 2. And 4 root 2 times 2 root 2, 4 times 2 is 8, root 2 times root 2 is 2, and 8 times 2 is 16. Ah, 32 times 8 was a perfect square. I didn't know that, but now I do. Must have been 256. Now, does it make sense that 16 is the geometric mean of the numbers 8 and 32? Well, we go back to the whole question of what this value could have been. It is 16, right? 8 times 1 is 16. 2. 16 times 1 is 32. 2. 32 over 2. 16 is 2. 16 over 8 is 2. That makes sense that that is that answer. 
Are they all going to be integers like that? No, I don't expect many more of those, but it makes sense that it's the answer. All right, number 12 from 9 and 16. Once again, there's a geometric mean between these values in such a way that I could write it that would be like 9 over x equals x over 16 is that proportion version that I could do. If I cross multiply, I get x squared is 16 times 9, which is 144. And I mention that because I know that multiplication and when I take the square root of both sides, I get a perfect square. However, ooh, I didn't do this in the last problem. You know what, I don't think the book's doing this as well. So I think we're good because we're, I was gonna say plus or minus. Um, oftentimes we talk about plus or minus, but because we're going to get into triangle talk, distances can't be negative. Let me quickly just check and make sure that they, I think they mentioned something about where the numbers gotta be positive and I'm gonna leave them as such here then if that's the case, give me one moment. You know what though, this book has trouble saying plus and minus for itself. Um, the positive number x. So I'm used to doing more talking about geometric sequences so we get more into the plus or minus aspect of it. We're not going to do that here. So x is 12, 12 is the number between nine and 16, excuse me, it's the geometric mean of nine and 16. Uh, then I multiply nine by a very specific number, I get 12, 12 times that same number, I get 16. Okay, now you can tell what's happening each time right here, you're saying that the geometric mean x squared is the product of the two numbers that you have. 14 times 20. I'll go ahead and play their game for this one. It seems to make the most sense, but the proportionality is something I want you to be ready for. So that is going to be, well, you know, let's expand it out just because I know what the number is, 280. Although it doesn't help me with this part. 280 is uh, 14 times 20. Um, I don't know the largest perfect square value. It's actually, I think it's four. Um, like root four times root 70, right? And 70 doesn't have any perfect square factors in it. It's 35 times two, which is five times seven times two. So I believe this is just two root 70. I don't think it can get any uh, better than that when it comes to simplifying the radical. Number 14 is we find the geometric sequence between 25 and 35. We will say, whoops, we will say that x squared, x, I'm having trouble x squared equals 25 times 35. Now, if you wanna practice some more of the things that you can do when it comes to solving for this stuff, oh, actually this one's straightforward. The square root of uh, 25 is five, and the square root of 35 can't be broken down more. Um, so forget what I was gonna say until we run into another problem that we can do this for. But five root 35, geometric mean of those two. Again, when I set it up like this, I'm losing my touch on what it is that we're actually finding. Besides, it's easy, you just set up this equation and solve. That's, you know, I often ask students to help each other out in situations, right? Hey, help other students, there's only one of me, there are 36 of you, if everyone rose their hand, you know, that kind of thing. Say, students, help each other out. If one student said, I don't know how to find the geometric mean, another student would say this. Oh, it's easy, you just write x squared and then you multiply those two numbers together. That was easy, you're right, that we, I, they're right, that was easy. But what did we just do? You know what I mean? What what does this represent? Why is it here? What does it have to do with it? It's a ratio-based thing. Anyway, the square root of 16 is four. The square root of 25 is five, as I took the square root of both sides. I'm not marking that enough. Um, and four times five is 20. 20 is the geometric mean between 16 and 25. And what we found, again, was the number between two values in a geometric sequence that I multiply 16 by the same value to get 20 as the values I multiply to get 25. Did we find out what that number was? No, but you could do 20 over 16 to figure it out or 25 over 20 to figure out and that is 5 fourths or 1.25. That is, that's not the answer. This is the number that I multiply 16 by to get this and all that. Not that we had to find it, but not that students would know that that is what geometric means are all about. For your sake, geome I'm sorry that I'm talking too much. For your sake, geometric means are all about where they exist in the similar right triangles, I suppose. X squared is eight times 28. Okay, let's explore this one a little bit more um, because I haven't been doing that enough. As we do the square root stuff, well, never mind. These can be simplified. Eight, uh, root eight is two root two. Root 28 is two root seven. 2 times 2 is 4, root 2 times root 7 is root 14, and that is about 
as good as I can break it down. We'll leave it be. We'll leave it be. Number 17. If there's any consolation, these at least are drill and kill problems. 17 and 36. Oh boy. X squared equals 17 times 36. Well, I'll tell you what. 17 itself is a prime number, which cannot be simplified more. So I'm not going to do very much with that. 36. Hold on. 30, the square root of 36 is 6. So I'm going to end up with 6 root 17. I don't really know what they want us to do in these problems, but I found the answer. And number 18, 24 and 45. Well, if x squared equals 24 times 45. And notice, you know, I'm not multiplying these into the big numbers. I'd rather simplify this way. Square root of 24 times square root of 45. Let's be different and write those out. The square root of 24 is 2 root 6, and the square root of 45 is 3 root 5. And 2 times 3 is 6, and root 6 times root 5 is root 30, which cannot be simplified. We get 6 root 30 as the geometric mean of those two values. Okay, those were geometric means. I hope you had fun and enjoyed some of those, and I hope I didn't go too fast, but just fast enough. Let's look at numbers 19 to 26, where we find the value of the variable. Now, these are coming after we just spoke on geometric means. I will, in some cases, play their game as far as how geometric means go, but I won't do it without saying out loud what something could be as a proportion beforehand to say this is what they want to get you to do. Now the first one I've set up, I've mentioned a couple times in the lecture portion, this over this equals this over that. 4, four over x, 4 over x equals x over 16. This is another one of the geometric, mean. all these are, all these are geometric mean based things that x is going to multi, uh, appear in multiple places, literally, somewhere. It's gonna appear in multiple places. And you just gotta recognize what's gonna happen when you cross multiply. Now, what I also did when writing that was I said, the long leg of the, the long leg of the small is to the long leg of the medium as the, excuse me, the long leg. The short leg of the small is to the short leg of the medium as the long leg of the small is to the long leg of the medium. So that's what I did in setup. When we cross multiply, we get x squared equals four times 16 that the length of the altitude, here's how they say it, the length of the altitude is the geometric mean of the two segmented parts of the hypotenuse that it breaks up. So four times 16, take its, whoops, take its square roots, you get two and four, and two times four is eight. Or four times 16 is 64, and the square root of 64 is eight. Here's number 19. Now number 20 is the same visual, the same diagram where y is the geometric mean of the numbers 5 and 8. And if it is the geometric mean, that means we could write it out as y squared equals 5 times 8. But if you were curious beforehand, we could also say 5 over y equals y over 8. And then we get to there. It gives you y squared is 40. I'll just go ahead and get that multiplied. The number's small enough. And the square root of 40 is 2 root 10, root 4 times root 10. And that is y's value. Number 21. We have a geometric mean, but this time it's not about y being the geometric mean. 18 is the geometric mean of 12 and y. 12 over 18, let's write the proportion first so you can see what I'm talking about. 12 over 18 equals 18 over y. 18 is the value that gets repeated twice. 18 squared equals 12 y this time. I don't take the square root of both sides here. I actually figure out what 18 squared is or you know, do what I need to for this. Uh, let me show you another way I can do it. 18 squared is 18 times 18, right? And I'm gonna divide both sides by 12. I bring this up because if I wanted to do better mental math, I could. 18 over 12 reduces to three over two, and 18 over two reduces to nine over one, and three times nine is 27. Y equals 27. Yes, there are other ways to do the math other than figure out what 18 squared is first, 324, and then divide that by 12, 27. There's number 21. Number 22, once again, the same kind of setup as the altitudes drawn with the 10, but this time 10 is the geometric mean of 25 and x, as if to say that 10 squared equals 25 times x. Well, 10 squared is 100, and divide both sides by 25, you will get x equals 4. I leave it at that for you. I'd say this section focuses more, I, I understand that this is all about similar triangles, but it really hits the geometric mean part hard, as if to say, you are supposed to know this. You are supposed to know this. Now, this is a different kind of setup because this time the altitude is not one of the known lengths that we have here. So if you want me to start to get into the talk of 
what proportion could be set up to write this thing out into the way that they want you to. Eventually they want this to say x squared equals 5 times 9. I'm going to show you exactly why that is in just a moment. You need to involve the x in this thing in some way. x represents two different things. The short leg of the big triangle and the hypotenuse of the small triangle. Now it just so happens that we know both aspects of the big triangle and the small triangle in that way. Actually, I take it back. This is not the small triangle. Um, this is the medium triangle, the medium triangle. The hypotenuse of the medium triangle is x. The hypotenuse of the big triangle is 4 plus 5, which is 9. Okay, the whole thing, 4 plus 5. So we have the hypotenuse of the medium to the hypotenuse of the big. Let's do something else in the medium. The medium representing um, 5. 5 is the long leg of the medium triangle, and x is the long leg of the big triangle. So there it is. When you cross multiply there, you can see that we get x squared is 5 times 9. Now, the way that they had this written before was they said that this, this portion here, this leg of the right triangle, equals this times that. If you remember that, you're better off. If you remember that. Come two weeks after your test, you're not going to remember it. Neither will I. I. I might. But I remember I was taught it last year, and I didn't remember until I started hearing this again. Uh, take the square root of both sides, you'll get x equals 3 root 5. Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 5 is that. So x is 3 root 5. All right, number 24, because it's applied the same way, maybe we can just jump straight into it. It's still the hypotenuse of and the long leg and all that stuff. So this time on number 24, we get, say, b squared equals 16 times 16 plus 6, which is 22. Take the square root of both sides, you get b. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 22 cannot simplify, so you get 4 root 22, like that. I'm going to leave them fast if they let me. Uh, number 25 is, I guess it's the same look. If we're going to be, if, if I'm going to be picky, then I don't need to be picky when I don't have to. So this time it's 27, though. 27 squared is this part times this whole. I guess it's 16z. Um, I could do what I did before, but this won't clean up very well. Uh, z is 27 squared over 16. Um, I don't know 27 squared, but to make matters worse, 16 doesn't share any common factors with 27. 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Um, so this doesn't break down you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Watch this. There are how many? 20, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. It's 27 squared. So two sets of 3s and 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And I do that. Not that anything cancels, but the, this is... Um, uh, I can't do that in my head. <laughs> I said it was going to be 1.5 times 1.5. But it's going to be an exact number, which is nice. 27 squared divided by 16. Um, let me get rid of that. 45.5625. 45.5625. And that is the exact, that is the exact value. And then lastly, number 26. X, oh, hold on a second. So you have to be careful in what you would write here. So on number 26, X is the geometric mean of two values. So the x squared thing that we do. But it's not 8 times 2. In fact, the first length that I need is this one. Not that it's hard to find. 8 minus 2 is 6. But you need to recognize that's what we do. The 2 is only used for that one portion. It's this times the whole. So 6 times 8. x squared equals 6 times 8. Which is 48. 48 has a perfect square factor of 16 as its largest thing. So root 16 times root 3 gives you 4 root 3. And that's number 26. Okay, almost an hour in. Let's start doing some error analysis now that I've kind of gotten the hang of some of those things that we're working off of. Describe and correct the error in writing an equation for the given diagram. They say z squared is w times w plus v. Well, as far as... There are two ways I can say it. I can say they did the formula wrong. They should have said z squared equals v times v plus w. So as far as me correcting it, z squared equals v times v plus w. 
But, you know, when it comes to my correction error analysis is you can't just tell somebody to fix that. You have to let them know why it doesn't work. Uh, they, their geometric mean formula is wrong. It's wrong. Proper part, uh, parts do not correspond. <laughs> now, when I say parts do not correspond, let's first come up with what this thing would have looked like. You know, I'll, I'll show you what mine looks like as well, but let's look at what theirs would have looked like if written as a ratio. If I, they have Z squared equals W times W plus V. If I divided both sides by Z, and I divided both sides by say W plus V, I'd have Z over W plus V equals W over Z. Now, Z represents what here? Z represents both the short leg of the big triangle and the hypotenuse of the, sm and the, hypotenuse of the small triangle. So here I could say the short leg of the big triangle for Z, and on the other side, it's hypotenuse of small. Okay, let's see what W plus V represents. W plus V represents the hypotenuse of the big. Now that's fine. I can do this. I can do short of big over hypotenuse of big as long as I now do short of medium or short of small over hypotenuse of medium or hypotenuse of small, but it needs to be the same thing twice. So notice that I'm going to use a small here. Short, big, hypotenuse, big. I got to do short, small, and hypotenuse of small. But what does W represent? W does not represent the short leg of the small triangle. It represents the long leg of the medium triangle. Long leg of medium. This does not correspond. That does not work out. Now, what did we set up with this formula? If I divide both sides, say, by Z and divide both sides by V plus W, I'll get Z over V plus W equals v over z. Now, what did we represent? What is z? z can represent, like I said, the short of the big, v plus w can be the hypotenuse of the big. So we can do short of big over hypotenuse of big. Generally, I try and go to a different triangle with it. I could have also said that z is not just the short of the big, it's also the hypotenuse of the small, which I'm going to write over here, hypotenuse of small. Now, what does v represent? V represents the short leg of the small triangle, and that's good. How come? Because it corresponds. Short of big over hypotenuse of big is short of small over hypotenuse of small. That checks out. Proper parts correspond. This is the answer. Now, if there's another problem where they, yeah, number 28, I'll set up the proportion first before I write out the next part because obviously it's wrong. It's error analysis, and then we'll get into that answer. If you have trouble with it, you're mismemorizing, have a way to go about it. Know your similar triangles or redraw them to get the similar triangles or represent parts that correspond. So number 28, D squared equals F times H. No, those parts don't correspond either. I, I'm gonna say the same thing. Geometric mean formula is wrong, parts don't correspond. Uh, now, what's the proper answer? Uh, I'm not gonna write it first, but the proper answer lies within how D is represented. Let's start with D in a proportion setup. D over this is what over what? D could represent, for example, the it's something in the medium triangle and something in the small triangle. It's the long leg in the small and it's the short leg in the medium. So let's look at it as the long leg in the small. Do we have a long leg in another triangle? Sure, we have the long leg of H. Excuse me, long leg of H in the hypotenuse. Oh, hold on. They probably want to use the letters. Um, well, we might not use the letters F and H. By the way, there's more than one answer to this is what I was going to say. Um, the long, let's say the long leg in the, how did I call D to begin with? The long leg in the small? Let's find the long leg in the medium G. So D over G equals, right? D over G equals. Now, I did sh long leg in small, long leg in medium. Let's find something else in the small and something else in the medium that we can use like the short leg in the small E over the short leg in the medium D. The reason I bring those up, I was going to do other ones, but we want to get D squared. Cross multiply and we get D squared equals G times E. Now, what are G times E? The two parts of the hypotenuse. They did H and F. We needed to use G and E or E and G, whichever one it is. This is what we wanted. <laughs> This is what they wanted us to say. This is all about geometric means and stuff. So there it is. All right, let's look at numbers 29 and 30. 
modeling of mathematics and exercises here use the diagram. It's the same as the example setup that they had before where we have a box and we want to do geometric mean stuff. So let's play their game. You want to determine the height of a monument at a local park. You use a cardboard square to line up the top and bottom of the monument as shown at the above left. So there's some people over here. Um, your friend measures the vertical distance from the ground to your eye and the horizontal distance from you to the monument approximate the height of the monument. Do I use either? Oh, 29 is here. I was going to say, can I use either? So 29 is here. So we have, let's redraw that. We have a right triangle here with an altitude here. That altitude length is 7.2 feet. And this length here is 5.5 feet. We need to find the height of the monument. So we need to find what I can call here H. Okay. Now these are the only bits of information that we have. Now, as far as geometric mean stuff goes, 7.2 is the geometric mean of this length and this length. But this length right here, we don't really know. Now I said I need to find H. If I needed to find this, I could say that this is H minus 5.5. What we could do instead is instead of calling the whole thing H, let's say we can find that later. We could call the whole thing H, I don't care. Let's just call this little guy here X. Not H, but this little guy X to work on geometric mean stuff. As if to say 5.5 over 7.2 equals 7.2 over X, or of course 7.2 squared. 7.2 squared is 5.5 .5 times X. Now this is a word problem, so I think they're very good with me you know, like working this out. 7.2 squared is 51.84. So 5.5x equals 51.84 and x is that divided by 5.5, which is, uh, well, it's a, it's a number. It's 9.425455 repeating. So the five and the four repeat themselves after this. So four, two, five, four, five, four, five, four, et cetera. Probably gonna round it to 9.43. Um, so H, the overall height, is uh, 5.5 plus this 9.43 number, which is about, so plus 5.5, 14.92, et cetera. So I'll say 14.93 feet in height as a whole. Okay, number 30. Your classmate is standing on the other side of the monument. She has a piece of rope staked. It's this figure. Use the information to approximate the height. Do you get the same answer as exercise 29? Explain your reasoning. So we'll see. But this time they have different information. This time they have the 9.5 represented here, I mean, it's something that you can, uh, once again, use geometric mean stuff on. You know, I guess I'm playing their game more so because it saves time when it comes to the mean stuff. But, uh, yeah, generally I wouldn't do it. You might ask, why why not if it saves time? Because I don't know it. I mean, I, I know it here. I, I don't know it as a whole. I know triangle similarity and proportionality, and you should too. Hopefully some of what I stated can kind of explain why that is. Okay, um, so let's call this thing X again because it would be used in kind of what we're doing as an overall. Actually, this time the height, instead of calling that X, the whole height is used as far as their geometric mean stuff goes. Height, the whole thing could be used here. 9.5, their setup would be like 9.5 squared is six times H. Like that's literally their go-to. That this squared, this is in the big right triangle, this squared is this times this, the whole thing. See, the way I would see that setup is that 9.5, the short leg of the big triangle is to six, the short leg in the small triangle, as the hypotenuse in the big triangle, H, is to the hypotenuse of the small triangle, 9.5. So when you cross multiply, then you get to that scenario. Anyway, 9.5 squared, anyway, 9.5 squared divided by six, gives me about 15.04 feet. That's when you just get H all by itself and stuff. 
Do you get the same answer in 29? Explain your reasoning. They're close. I mean, they're within... They're within, uh, they're within a foot, <laughs> they're within about an inch of each other, pretty much. Do I get the same answer, though? Hold on, how do, how do they kind of go about this? Um, she extends the rope to the cardboard square she is holding and stuff. Uh, answers are nearly the same. Answers nearly identical. I don't know if they want me to say yes or no, because they're not exact. You know, maybe the numbers that we used are just a little bit rounded to begin with, and you never want to use rounded numbers kind of as a whole to talk about. So I don't really know if they want us to say like yes or no to this kind of thing. It seems kind of, yeah, they're about the same. Um, your friend measures the verdict. For, yeah, I, I'll just say they're nearly identical. Error... Error comes from rounding early. <laughs> Imprecise measurements. I don't. I don't think that measurements are wrong. They're just not as precise as they can get. Seven point two feet. That might not be exactly seven point two. It might be seven point two one three eight zero four or four things like that. So they rounded those numbers kind of early, and those are the ones that we used. Give me a second. Kind of have some sniffles here. We finished 30? I think we finished 30. The exercise is 31 to 34. Find the values of the variables. All right. Well, we're playing their game at this point. I think I've preached on my pedestal enough. 12 is the geometric sequence. The geometric mean, excuse me, of a plus 5 and 18. 12 squared equals 18 times a plus 5. Selfishly, I want to finish. 144 is, uh, do I want to divide by 18 there? Let's just, let's just distribute. 18a plus 90? Is that right? I think so. Um, subtract 90. Oh, this is a clean number. A is 3. Let's see if that works. A plus 5, 3 plus 5 would be 8. <laughs> and 12, is 12 the geometric... Yeah, because you know why? Because uh, eight over eight over twelve should equal twelve over eighteen, because that's how geometric uh, means work. Eight over twelve is two thirds. Twelve over eighteen is two thirds. That thing checks out fully. All right, cool. Uh, number thirty-two. <clears throat> Six is the geom geometric mean of eight and b plus three. See, at least I can use my stuff to double check and verify that things are how they're supposed to be. Obviously, I could have plugged it into here, but. Um, six is the geometric mean of eight and B plus three. Let's distribute that one. Subtract that. See, this one's not going to be clean. Subtract 24 from both sides and divide both sides by, well, it's clean enough. It's going to be 1.5. Um, divide both sides by eight and B is 1.5. I don't know if I want to double check that one as well. Let's try it. 1.5 plus 3 is 4.5. Let's see. Hmm. What is 8 over 6? And what is 6 over 4.5? 8 over 6 is 4 thirds. 6 over 4.5 is 4 thirds. That seems to check out just fine as well. All right, number 33. Find the value of the variables. So they're multiple this time, right? Now they... I want to get less into the geometric mean talk. I want to get more into what I would say here. Um, I want to use the 12 and 16 in a certain way. I think X is a prime candidate for something I want to go for first. Once I find X, I think I can find the others. Um, X is one I'm more fine on geometric mean stuff. Let's set it up as a proportion, though. Everything this time will set up as a proportion. X over 12 is 12 over 16, like so. Um, let's cross multiply. You get 16X is 144. Divide both sides by 16, you get x is 9. So x equals 9 in this scenario. Let's change that to a 9 outright. Yes, I could do geometric mean stuff on the others. I'm going to do proportions now in this. Let's go for y. y is both the, uh, uh, the hypotenuse of the small triangle. Do we have the hypotenuse of something else? Sure, like the big triangle. Because it's also, y is also represented in the big triangle as... The short side. So 
I'm sorry about this. I'm I'm speaking too uh, quick, uh, s slowly. Why is the hypotenuse in the small triangle and 25 is the hypotenuse in the big triangle? Small, big. In the small triangle, we also have the short leg that is nine because y is also the short leg in the big. If we cross multiply here, we'll get y squared is nine times 25 something which I'm sure you could have worked out there. Uh, and uh, without actually multiplying it, let's take the square root now. Square root of uh, 9 is 3, square root of 25 is 5, and 3 times 5 is 15. Now z, I'm actually intrigued by using that 15 if, it, if it's possible to do. I'm actually intrigued by finding z without using a geometric mean thing. Maybe I can now that I have all of these numbers. I've everything at my disposal that I can use. Z is, for instance, the hypotenuse of the big triangle. Excuse me, of the, of the medium triangle. And the hypotenuse of the big triangle is 25. Now, can I do this without using Z again? I just use the medium and the big. Let's use the, I was going to say the long leg of the medium. Let's use the short leg of the medium. Ha ha. Let's use the short leg of the medium, 12, and the short leg of the big, 15. Ha ha. I didn't have to use Z again. Look at that. Cross multiply and I get 15z equals, and 25 times 12 is 300. Divide both sides by that and you get z equals 20. Now, if I did use their geometric mean setup, I would have said z squared is 16 times 25, and z is square root, and that's 4 times 5, which is 20. I know you're probably saying that that was quicker, but it, once again, it's not an argument about quicker in this sense if you don't know what you're doing with it, uh, especially as fast as I did it. All right, number 34. Number 34, let's go with x again being that portion of the geometric mean, but I'd like to set it up as a proportion again. But I want to talk about what those proportions are. When I say x over 32 here, I'm talking about really in that medium triangle. I'm doing the uh, long leg of the medium triangle to the long leg of the small triangle. As 32, the long leg of the small triangle is to the... Sorry, how did I say it before? The long leg of the medium triangle is to the long leg of the small triangle as the short leg of the medium triangle is to the short leg of the small triangle. There we go. Getting those set up. Cross mold. Well, let's reduce the fraction first. This is where I can actually benefit from setting up a proportion to begin with. So that's 4 thirds. Now I cross multiply and I get 3x equals 128 and divide both sides by 3 and I get x equals not a clean number. Well, that's a shame. Um, 128 over 3. Okay, I did not really anticipate getting something there so so big. Let's just make sure that that calculation is just not as uh, pretty as I, or is as unpretty as I wanted it to be. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So it's about 42.6, you know, whatever. So 42.7. Okay, well, there's X. Uh, in case I want to use the 42.7, but I don't want to use a rounded value, so be careful not to do that. Uh 128 over 3. Does that mean I have to use that for y? Kind of. Yeah, because I can't just use 24 and 32. I wouldn't get parts that correspond. So y, as a proportion, y is the short leg of the big, and we have the short leg of the small here, and then we could use the of the big, we also then have the hypotenuse as 24 plus 128 over 3. And the hypotenuse of the small being y again. So y squared equals this 24 times 24 plus 128 over 3. Nothing pretty about that. I'm going to go straight into... Oh, well, hold on a second. Let's distribute that. 24 times 24 is 576. 24 right here, 24 can divide by this 3, and I get 8. 8 times 128, I don't know. 1,024, is that going to work? 8 times 128 is 1,024. 1,024, oh, oh, and 570, let's just do this in calculator, plus 576, and I get 1,600. So y squared is 1,600, therefore y is going to be 40. I did not know that was going to clean up so well. So. This intrigues me to try and solve for z without using the 128 over 3 ever. That's 
possible, probably possible. So let's try that through a proportion. Because if I did geometric mean, I'd have to use it. I don't know. So let's see. Z is the both the hypotenuse of the medium and the long leg of the big. Now, can I go to the 40 and the 32 and the 24? I think I'm going to have to use this other 120 over 3 somewhere. I can do the hypotenuse of the big and hypotenuse of the small and the... No, I can use the... Oh, no, that's the medium. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can do this. I think I can do hypotenuse of the big over the hypotenuse of the small is equal to the short leg of the big, 40 over the short leg of the small, 24. Did never have to use 128 over three. And that's something a geometric mean wouldn't teach you. So cross, uh, reduce, let's reduce first. Z over 40 equals, divide these by four, or divide these by eight, you get five thirds. Cross multiply, and you get three. Z equals um, 200. And z is another fraction, 200 over 3. So I'm glad that I kind of saved y for last there, which would be about, what, 66.7? If I did that right, I'm going to venture a guess that that's what that would be. So 41, let's let me make sure that calculation worked out right. Um, no, let's see here. I don't know if that, that would be z. Did I reduce that right? Yes, I did. Uh, Z is the long leg. Oh, it's not the hypotenuse. It's the long leg of the big triangle. Oh, hold on a second. That wouldn't have worked out. So that's a wrong. That's a wrong uh, proportionality. So let's let's try that again. The long leg of the big. I know the long leg of the small, 32, and then the short leg of the big, short leg of the small. Let's do that again. Uh, not 200. Not 200. But Z over 32 equals. Sorry about that. Five thirds. Cross multiply that. That's 160. So there we go. I think that should work out. 160 over 3. And that would be 53.3 repeating. So about 53.3. Okay. So those should pan out there. That's number 34. All right. Number 35. Use the diagram. Decide which proportions are true. Select all that apply. See, now you don't get geometric means in your way. You could set up a geometric mean and divide like I did earlier in a, the error analysis problems, but you'd have to know what you're doing. All right, DB over DC equals D over DB. DB over DC could say something like short leg of medium, short leg of small. DA would be the long leg of the medium. DB would be the long leg of the small. That applies. That's good. By the way, that's also geometric mean. I guess some of these might work if you know your geometric mean stuff. BA over CB, that would be the hypotenuse of the medium, hypotenuse of the small, equals CB, the, oh, hold on. CB is not in the medium triangle, so let's do that again. BA, the long leg of the big, oh, but these also might not be in proportion. <laughs> the long leg of the big over the short leg of the big equals the CB would be the hypotenuse of the small, this isn't in proportion. I don't know what this is. That that doesn't work. Any any which way I said it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't apply. CA over BA, hypotenuse, that's hypotenuse of the big, straight up. CA over BA, let's call hypotenuse of the medium, equals BA, long leg of the big, over CA. CA? No, that no, that doesn't work. What the heck? No, I just should have just looked at that and said no. You know what would have worked was B. CA over BA, hypotenuse of big, hypotenuse of medium, and then long leg of big, and then I would do long leg of medium, which would have been DA. DA would have been good there. But as the typo is, it's not that. All right, um, last one, DB. DB over BC. I could call this the short leg of the medium and the short leg of the big. DA is the, oh, but that's not in the, it's not in the, uh, yeah, well, hold on, short, short leg of the medium or the short leg of the big equals the long leg of the medium over the long leg of the big. Yes, that works. Yes, that works. Yes, that works. Okay. Love it, love it, love it. Now, okay, that's fine. Okay, that's number 35. Number 36, 
analyzing relationships. You are designing a diamond shaped kite. You know that AD is 44.8 centimeters. Then why, then why don't they write it? 44.8. You know, I'm going to copy and paste this over. Give me a second. I have a feeling the problems are about to get a lot longer. I have about 11 problems to go and oh, they might take a while. <laughs> okay, let's lock that. All right, 44.8. I'm not gonna write the centimeters right now. I'm just gonna write the numbers. DC is 72 centimeters and AC <laughs> the whole way across is 84.8 centimeters. You want to use a straight crossbar BD. About how long should it be? Explain your reasoning. So you'd have to know about kites. Kites have congruency not only here and here and such, but also BD, you know, this, this in between. If I found out this length, which is probably what I'm going to do, if I find out this length right here, I'm going to double it to get BD's length. So let's kind of figure out what this X is. That's going to be the ultimate goal. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> I think. I, I feel like that's the main way that I'd want to go about this. Or I could find individual lengths, you know, like these guys, although I wouldn't call them X, and use Pythagorean theorem to find something there. So X is the, we could say it's the long leg of the small triangle, and we know the long leg of the, say, big triangle. I want to use the big because I'm about to talk about hypotenuses. As the hypotenuse of the small triangle is to the hypotenuse of the big triangle. There, I could do that straight up without finding anything else. So let's do that. Uh, I'm just going to cross multiply and figure these things out. If they're good enough, then they can. Uh, I can round it. 44.8 times 72. So x is going to be, four, you know, we're going to multiply by 72, right? I probably shouldn't have even cross multiplied. I should have just multiplied both sides by 72. So in my calculator here, I'm going to do 44.8 times 72 and divide by 84.8. It's not a clean number, uh, 38.037, I'll say it's about 38.04 centimeters, by the way. But I'm gonna leave the exact answer in the calculator that I have because I'm gonna double my value and then I can just get you know as well proper as I can. So 78.08, uh, 76.08, uh, BD, BD is two X's, so 76.08 centimeters. There, so I found X using a proportionality and did that. Explain your reasoning, it's in my math. So that's about how long it should be. All right, now the other part about that is once again, these would be congruent to each other. This diagonal bisects this diagonal in the kite, so these two were the same. That's why I could double it. That's my explanation. Okay, number 30. I put 35. Did I skip a problem? Oh, that was 35. Okay, that was 36. So I skipped writing anything on this side for that other problem. That's okay. Number 37. Use both of the geometric mean theorems to find AC and BD. Okay, so this time I will actually use their theorem and play. They asked me to and I'm going to. I AC and BD. Um, Wait, I want to find AC through Pythagorean theorem. I already know the answer is going to be 25. Use both of the geometric theme. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do this. So 20, I know that 20 squared will be AD times AC. And I know that 15 squared will be DC times AC. So AC can be represented by either of these. If I divide both sides by AD, I'll get AC is 400, that's 20 squared, over AD. What did I just do? 400 over AD. And if I divide both sides by DC here, I'll get AC equals 225 over DC. So these are equal. 400 over AD equals 225 over DC. Now, that's one thing I can use in basically a system of equations. Use the other geometric mean theorem to find BD, huh? Now BD, I know that BD squared 
equals AD times DC. Hmm. I wonder how I can use this best to find these things. I really just want to use Pythagorean theorem. Am I allowed to just use Pythagorean? Do, are, are they allowing me to use Pythagorean theorem or do I have to work this stuff out in such a way that this is going to make me upset? Because um, I can't get to AD times DC in any other sort of way here. Uh, AD times DC, but they're down here. If I divided by AD, that's that's not like really gonna get me anything there. Um, I set these up right, right? Twenty squared is AD times AC. I don't know if what I'm doing is working out because I lost AC in the shuffle. I totally did. I don't know if I should have done that specifically. Maybe there are other ways I can rewrite that. AD times DC can also be written in terms of that. Uh, I want to think about this one actually now suddenly. I don't know. My, my big thing is through Pythagorean theorem, this would be 25 or through, you know what it really is. I didn't use Pythagorean theorem in my head. It's a Pythagorean triple. This is a three, four, five triangle where everything's five times bigger. But that's not using a geometric mean theorem. So, and they said use both of them. There are three, oh, there are two theorems, I see. Well, they said use both of them. So I'm getting something set up. Let me keep thinking on what I want to do with this next. I'm actually not sure. Let me think about it. Okay, so this is some stuff that I built up here. Instead of setting AC, I, I, I'm kind of at a stuck point still. Instead of setting the ACs equal here, I went more in terms of let's get AC represented in both things. So from these equations, call this 400, call this 225, let's get AC involved because BD is 80 times DC. So I got 80 by itself, DC by itself, get AC involved, and then you multiply these. 400 times 225 is 90,000. And then I took the square root of everything. I got BD, I wrote BC by accident, but BD is 300 over AC. So here is a Here's at the very least a representation of both these things, but I can't come up with another equation that, <coughs> excuse me, puts them all together outside of using Pythagorean theorem. And if I use Pythagorean theorem stuff, I get AC is 25. So if AC is 25, it's Pythagorean theorem stuff, then BD is 300 over 25, which is 12. I, I mean, I know those are the answers. I just don't know if we're supposed to use Pythagorean theorem or not. It seems like we are. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so otherwise, I don't know if that's enough information. Or it is. But I'm kind of at a loss for thinking of how to do it. And um, I would have to think about it more. Maybe I can do a separate video if I come up with it again. But I'm going to leave that at that. I'm going to leave that at that. Please, Pythagorean theorem, I get that part and I can work it out. Okay, number 38. Um, how do you see it? In which of the following triangles does the geometric mean theorem apply? Um, well, it, oh, well, not in A, because we don't know this is a right triangle. Uh, in B, we right triangle at an altitude, that's all good. C, we don't know this is a right triangle once again. And D, we don't know that's an altitude, so B. Uh, B. Okay, that's a pretty quick problem. Number 39. Oh, we got to do a proof. Proving a theorem. Use the diagram of triangle ABC. They have it kind of pre-made, though. Copy and complete the proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, we're proving A squared plus B squared equals C squared in this setup with a right angle BCA. Is it right in triangle ABC? Okay, let's just try <laughs> Let me get the statements and reasons out and play with the diagram. At least they have the statements for the most part taken care of. Because I don't know if I would know what to do. Okay. Number 39. Triangle ABC, BCA is a right angle that is given. 
Draw a perpendicular segment altitude from C to AB. That's done. That's perpendicular postulate, sure. CE equals A squared and CF equals B squared. CE, C times E is A squared. So this is geometric mean theorem and B is F times C is kind of what they say. C times F is B squared or yep, that's a geometric mean theorem. Mean is not abbreviated. Sorry about that. CE plus B squared equals blank plus B squared. Looks like that they are taking A, that, so this is A squared. We're adding B squared to both sides of this equation. We're adding B squared to both sides of that equation. It's the addition property of equality. So CE equals A squared, do that. And CE plus CF equals a squared plus b squared. So here's a squared plus b squared. b squared turned into cf. That is a substitution. I don't know where they're going with this, but I, I do know where they're going. I don't know how they're determining this. <clears throat> uh, they factor. I'm just going to call it factoring. They factor a c out of both of those. And e plus f equals all of c. Oh, that's a good way to do it. Segment addition postulate, right? You look at this. e plus f is all of c. C times C is A squared plus B squared. They're going from this equation where it says C times EF. They did another substitution. And C times C is C squared. So another way of proving the Pythagorean theorem using the geometric mean theorem. Hey, that was pretty fast. All right, thank you number 39 for being a fast version of a proof that I did not know was gonna come and it was there. All right, number 40, making an argument. Your friend claims the geometric mean of four and nine is six and then labels the triangle as shown. Is your friend correct? Explain your reasoning. Um, the geometric mean of 4 and 9 is 6. I, I know that because 9 over 6 is the same thing as 6 over 4. That is 3 halves. So you're multiplying literally by 3 halves to get from 4 to 6 and from 6 to 9, or by 2 thirds to go from 9 to 6 and 6 to 4. So your friend's correct there. However, it's in the wrong place. As far as that being a geometric mean, the 4 would have to go here and the nine would have to go here. So is your friend correct? Your friend's correct that the geometric mean of nine and four is six. However, eight, six. However, the nine and four are placed in the wrong portions of the triangle figure c image <laughs> uh see the image over there in the actual thing on the left side of my screen that we have okay that's number 40 numbers 41 and 42 use the given statements to prove the theorem with five problems left run into another proof of course i don't know what 45 is but anything else besides those uh we'll see prove the geometric mean theorem by showing that cd squared equals 80 times bd Given that triangle ABC is a right triangle, altitude CD is drawn to hypotenuse. So let's do a less rough drawing. Let's actually, oh goodness, what's happening here? Let's uh, actually make a right triangle. Can I change the scale? I'm trying to, there it goes. All right, so I have a right triangle here, ABC. Can't tell which one's the right angle. CD, I guess C is the right angle. So ABC, CD is an altitude right there, drawn to here. We have to prove that CD squared is AD times BD. Now, I, I know what I want to do. I was just trying to decide if I should prove it backwards for you guys. But here's the thing. Eventually, because I've, I've kind of mentioned this several times now, I... This comes into play by setting up a proper proportion of parts from course of corresponding parts from similar triangles. So I'm speaking backwards. We need to prove that two triangles are similar. Two triangles that have these parts. Now CD is right here. CD is right here. That corresponds in two different triangles. To make it squared, it has to exist in two different triangles. The small triangle and the medium triangle. It doesn't exist in the big triangle. CD is in the small triangle here. It's the long leg and it's the short leg in the big triangle there. So what we have to do is prove that the, sh the small the small and the medium triangles are similar. We have to prove that, okay? Now, 
that's a less easy proof to make about those two similar triangles as it is to prove that they're similar to the big triangle. The sucky part about this proof is I do think I have to prove, and in fact, I want to do this on another page because I'm running out of lines. I think I have to first prove that each of these triangles are similar to the big triangle and then use transitive property of equality, uh, of uh, similarity to say that they're similar to other ones. So this actually might be a long proof. Okay, let me do the fast version of the proof so you know what I'm writing. Let's say I called this angle here X and this angle here Y. This angle X exists in this triangle and in this triangle here. And it's a shared angle. Therefore, that angle is congruent in both those triangles by the reflexive property. Also, all right angles are congruent. So these two triangles are gonna be congruent by angle, or similar by angle angle, this big and the small. Y is shared in two triangles. It's shared in the medium triangle and it's shared in the big triangle. By reflexive property, that angle Y is congruent to itself as well. All right angles are congruent here as well. Therefore, these two triangles are similar by angle angle. If both triangles are similar to the big triangle, then they're similar to each other is what I have to make a conclusion on. <clears throat> if number 42 has the same first steps for some of the stuff here, then I want to use them again. So can I can I say maybe I don't maybe I don't have to do all that proof stuff to begin with? Can I just say that they're similar? Did they tell us that they're similar and can we use that theorem? That's the thing I'm curious about. I wonder if I can just go straight to there. I can just say that it's the, I think they, oh, maybe I don't have to do that. Maybe I can say right triangle similarity theorem and I'm good. I'm just going to do that. Let's just do that. Triangle ABC is a right triangle given. Okay, I thought I had to do a lot more than that. Now, did we ever prove the right triangle similarity thing? That I don't know. I expected us to have to prove that at one point. It's weird that we never did that. Okay, altitude, CD is drawn to hypotenuse, AB, also given. Okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say the two triangles are similar by the right triangle similarity theorem. It's one that we mentioned before. So I'm going to say triangle. Now what two triangles are similar? Let's go across the short and long leg of the small, ADC. Triangle ADC is similar to, let's go across the short and long leg of the medium, CDB. Triangle CDB. That is the right triangle similarity theorem, I believe we called it. Right triangle similarity theorem, all abbreviated. Corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportional. So I want to say, let's do the short of the small over the short of the medium, AD over DC. What letters? Well, let's say CD. AD, AD over CD equals. Now let's do the long leg of the small, CD, over the long leg of the medium, DB. DB. They use DB, they use DB. DB. Corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportional. That's how I've said that before. And now number five, we cross multiply. Cross multiplication, cross multiplication is not a step that you say out loud. Instead we say, I wrote AD. Oh, whoopsie. I was I was looking at this, I was looking at this down there. Okay. A D times D B uh, B D. They're saying BD. I was looking at the wrong problem for a second. AD times BD, that is a multiplication property of equality. Okay, if I don't have to prove the triangle similar, then it's gonna be a lot faster like it just was. Awesome. That is number 41. Number 42, I suppose we can do the same thing and we have that same appearance. We're gonna have the same Kind of copy and paste this. We'll have some things that are pretty similar. So 42. Here we go. The difference is uh, not much. We're proving two things. I wonder if I. It's going to take a lot longer. But the givens are there to begin with. Um, CB. So these are parts of the big triangle. We have to do two different sets here, where we're going to be using the big triangle. 
I want to keep that reason. We're going to use parts of the big triangle here. We need to show that or state that in the small triangle ADC, that's across the short and the long legs. Now we'll say ACB in the big triangle. So triangle, let's just say they're all similar. Can I do that? Would that matter? Wait, do we need to know both of them? CB, where's CB? CB is this guy, that's in the medium. No, yeah, that's in the medium triangle. And then, I guess we can do it in both. Hmm. CB is DB times AB. DB, AB, AB, AB. Um, AB, AB is in the big triangle. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do triangle ADC. ADC is similar to triangle, ADC, similar to triangle, short, long, let's do ACB. And triangle, now let's go short and long on the uh, other one, CDB. Triangle CDB is similar to triangle ACB as well. So that's the right triangle similarity theorem. Now we'll go to that step four in parts that are proportional. Now the proportions that I want to do here have to do with showing I need CB squared and AC squared. So CB applies to the medium triangle. Let's talk about AC first. AC applies, it's the hypotenuse of the small triangle and, and it's the short leg of the big triangle. So AC, hypotenuse of the small triangle, is to the hypotenuse of the big triangle, AB, as the short leg of the small triangle, AD, is to the short leg of the big triangle, AB. That's corresponding, I said parts before, I should have said sides. Corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. CSSTP, I said parts before. Corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. Now, I want to do another one. Let's do ones with the medium. We've got to use CB, right? CB is the hypotenuse of the medium. CB, hy hypotenuse of the medium, over the, now see hypotenuse of the big, AB, equals... We need the medium and the big again. How does CB apply? CB is also the long leg of the big. So we need the long leg of the medium, DB. DB, long leg of the medium, is to the long leg of the big, CB. So that's the corresponding parts thing. And now let's do that cross multiplication. Call it multiplication property of equality. We're here. A, oh, these shouldn't both be AB. Let me rewrite those again and see what I did. I did AC over AB. That's hypotenuse of the small, hypotenuse of the big. And then I did the short legs, short leg the small, short leg the big is AC, not AB. So let me write AC here. Now let's cross multiply these things. On the first one, AC times AC is AC squared, and you get AB times AD. A, I'll write the way that they wrote it, AD times AB. And then here when I cross multiply these guys, I get CB squared equals, and I think they put DB times AB. Yeah. AB, that's just the multiplication property of equality, I was right. Mult prop of EQ. Okay. Those are those proofs, assuming I'm allowed to use the right triangle similarity theorem, which we never proved together. Okay, number 43. Oh, there's a bottom proof. Okay, number 43, critical thinking. Draw a right isosceles triangle. I can use a tool for that. I, already, I think I already know what they're going to talk about, but okay. I think they're talking about geometric means and being, so I don't know. Draw a right isosceles triangle and label the two leg lengths x. No, I guess I don't know what they're going to talk about. Then draw the altitude to the hypotenuse and label its length y. Now use the right triangle similarity theorem to draw the three similar triangles from the image. This is not what I expected and label any side length that is equal to either x or y, what can you conclude about the relationship between the small, small triangles? Small triangles, explain your reasoning. Well, I can conclude these two triangles are congruent to each other. This guy and this guy are the same. But the bigger triangle is going to be bigger than them. It says, 
use the right triangle similarity theorem to draw the three similar triangles from the image and label any side length equal, equal to x and y. So the big triangle, I'm not going to draw it as big, but the big triangle has lengths x and x. We don't know y anymore inside. The smaller, both these other triangles are going to be the same size. But in these smaller triangles here, we have, let's call this triangle number one, we have some length y if we called it the upper side, and then x is going to be a hypotenuse. And then on this one, y represents the other side here where x is there because the y's don't correspond. Normally we call this like the long leg of the small, but then also the short leg of the medium triangle. And so if this is long leg here, they're both equal, but they don't correspond and this is how we draw them. It says, what can you conclude about the relation? Wait, hold on. Draw the three similar triangles to the image label any side length. What can you conclude about the relationship between the two small triangles? Explain your reasoning. I can conclude they are congruent. They are congruent. Now, why can I say that? Uh, by the Pythagorean theorem. Basically, Sorry about the handwriting. Basically, <clears throat> y squared plus something squared is x squared. Y plus squared plus something squared is x squared. This third side will be the same thing based on what this is. This is also an angle side. Oh, not Pythagorean theorem. Let's do the hypotenuse leg. HL. HL congruence theorem. I mean, Pythagorean theorem would verify that, but that's how I know that those two triangles are congruent. Kind of a weird question. All right, number 44, thought-provoking. The arithmetic mean and geometric mean of two, I mentioned arithmetic mean, of two non-negative numbers x and y are shown. Write an inequality that relates these two means, justify your answer. I already know that the arithmetic mean is going to be more than a geometric mean for non-negatives. So x plus y over two is going to be greater than the square root of x, y. How can I state this that would Let me say that I know this for sure. I don't know if you notice what geometric means, you know, like from four to six to nine and whatever, but six, you know, you're gonna multiply by some. I wonder how I can justify this thing best. Um, but that's the inequality. This is gonna be greater. The midpoint, I mean, I can think of it on graphs for an exponential function. I can think of it for Think for a lot of different things. I don't know how to say it for here that would actually make the most sense for what I want to say here. But arithmetic means always greater. I mean, as far as midpoints go, a midpoint is greater than the thing. Ugh, I don't know how to explain it. An exponential curve gets dominated by a line at some place where we know those two things are. So ugh, I don't think it's anything you're going to make sense of. If I have two points right here, the slope between these two would arrive at a midpoint, whereas these two on a curve, that midpoint would be lesser than, that point would be smaller than, I don't know. I'm not really saying it the best way that I can. I, I know what I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, arithmetic mean, always greater, unless X and Y were the same value. I should have typed this. Unless x equals y, then they'd be same. I don't think I'm supposed to like calculate anything. I don't know why my handwriting is so bad on this right now. I think it's just some sort of form of rushing that I want to be done with. Last question though, number 45, but it is a proof. Prove, oh, prove the right triangle similarity theorem. So I said we didn't prove it yet. So why do they let us do other things to prove it before, excuse me, in a proof before we could prove it? I don't know, but apparently they allowed us to do that just because now they're telling us to prove it. ABC's right triangle proved that these ones are similar. Okay, I mentioned this before, but I didn't really get a good writing in it, and I don't know. Oh boy, I'm gonna try. Like, I don't know if I call things, I guess I can call them by the letters. So I want a drawing. I don't actually want to copy and paste that, but I do want to make a drawing. ABC is a right triangle, altitude CD, something, something, something. It's probably drawn to hypotenuse AB. 
So let's draw ourselves a right triangle like that. And let's figure it out. Uh, from C, A, B, C is a right triangle. Oops. And we're going from C to D, drawn to hypotenuse AB. Like that. Prove they're all similar in some such ways. I want to prove the triangles similar to ABC first because they both share an angle together. But we got to write some stuff out. So one for statements and reasons. Number one, ABC is a right triangle. Two, draw altitude CD. to hypotenuse AB, which I already did. What do they call this? I guess given. I was going to say perpendicular postulate, but it's given. Okay. An altitude creates a right angle. So angles A, D, C, and A, uh, C, D, B are right angles. So is angle ACB. Uh, this is the definition, whoops, this is the definition of an altitude. Now we also know that angle ACB is a right angle by definition of a right triangle. I don't know if I have to say all that, but ACB is a right angle by definition of right triangle. All right, now all, whoops, right triangle. Now all right angles are congruent to each other. I'll go ahead and make the statement now in case it does matter. Angle, well, I'll do them separately, but angle ADC is congruent to angle ACB and, 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 angle CDB is congruent to angle ACB. That is the right angle theorem. All right angles are congruent to each other. So that's a set of angles. That's one set of angles. To prove triangle similar, we can do an angle angle case. What I want to show is that I'm going to call this X and Y temporarily. I will not write that in the proof. But X is shared in the small triangle and in the big triangle. Y is shared in the medium triangle and in the big triangle. So I'll call that angle CAD right here when I'm referring to the small triangle. But the big triangle, I'm going to refer to it as CAB. Those will not be corresponding parts if I do that though, so let's do it the other way. C is the hypotenuse to A to the short side, let's do B, A, C. So angle C, A, D is congruent to angle, I think we call it B, A, C. That's the reflexive property of congruence because it's a shared angle, not ref text, but reflex. property of congruence. Now there's also another set right here for that Y. Right, so this is CBD in the medium triangle. That goes across the hypotenuse and stuff. So same thing, but we'll call it ABC. So CBD and ABC. Oops, let's do it on the same step. Angle CBD is congruent to angle ABC for the same reason. So I already ran out of room on this, on this thing. Oh, I guess that's why I had so much to do. So step seven says that these two triangles sets are now similar. So in step seven, oh, we just had to prove they're similar. That's right, we don't have to do proportions. So I'm pretty much done here. So triangle, I could use these parts that correspond still, because we, we went across the hypotenuse in the long leg, right? Triangle CAD is similar to triangle BAC. Triangle CBD is similar to triangle. They use specific letters though. CBD and ABC. Let me call this one ABC then as well. Triangle ABC. But then I have to do what? It was what? BAC. So ABC. We got to call it ACD. ACD. And that's what it says in the proof as well. So A, C, D. This is the angle-angle theorem. 
similarity theorem. And lastly, number eight, I assume there's something called transitive property of similarity or something like that, just some form of transitive property. Two triangles similar to the same triangle are similar to each other, right? Um, so I don't know if that works, but I'll say that. So triangle A, uh, C, D is similar to triangle C, B, D. Um, oh. Maybe I can't do that. Maybe I have to keep moving forward and make mention of how that angle exists in the third triangles from those things. Can I just say two triangles similar to the same triangle are similar to each other? It seems like I can, but I don't know if that's an actual meaning. Um, I'll, I'll go for it. I'll just say that. So... Um, transitive property of similarity. I don't think that's the name, but two triangles similar to the same triangle are similar to each other. All right. All right, guys. I am going to finish on that one there. That was the last problem, number 45. Okay. That'll do it for this one. This is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. Listen, there were some hiccups along the way with this, mostly because I'm not at odds with what the book's talking about. It's talking about it just fine. But as far as a student learning background, that geometric mean stuff is stuff, you know, like I said, there was the one that I remember and that I use all the time. It's just kind of an application for, but it means a lot more to me because I know what geometric sequence are, sequences are and I build a proportion from it. And sometimes you want to build proportions from things as well. Not everything is just in a geometric mean basis and you won't necessarily remember what to do with it when you come test it. But guys, that'll do it for this one. This is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I will see you in the next one.